painting! Everyone loves painting. All those colours, all those material and tool choices, brushes, kitchen rolls, sponges, hands. It's great, right? Oh, nerd. What have you done? Imagine this. A world of painting, but with absolutely zero mess. A world of painting that could draw the attention of every member of your household as they were forced to watch you trying to draw a circle with a joystick rather than enjoying their favourite TV programme. A chance to have your works of art on television just like you were on Art Attack or Heartbeat or even Rolf's Cartoon Club. Like actually being famous it would be. You could be an artistic superstar. But before we get too carried away, let's trace the roots of this digital painting phenomenon. Let's go back, way back, to the world of Etch-a-Sketch! Launched way back in 1960, believe it or not, by the Ohio Art Company, it was most children's first foray into combining artistic skills with the medium of a screen. And due to the nature of the control mechanism, sketches on this etching device were always very blocky and unwieldy in nature, unless you were a true pro. But let's face it, we probably weren't, and if you were, you probably had too much time on your hands. The device is controlled by twisting two knobs <laughs> located in the lower corners. This moved a stylus which in turn displaced aluminium powder on the back of the screen, thus leaving a solid line. This type of drawing is referred to as linographic. The tablet remains popular even today, showing that simple ideas often prevail throughout history. Taking a giant leap forward into the 80s, we arrive at another type of drawing device. The Tycho Magic Copier. Now, the Tycho Magic Copier is a twist on all those familiar magic drawing pads, where pressure is applied using a dummy pen to a sheet which then sticks to the surface underneath, rendering your work of art in its magical glory. The difference with the Tycho Magic Copier is firstly that it looks like a photocopier, and secondly, it can translate your creations onto paper, just like a real photocopier. Simply slide some paper into the machine, insert some carbon paper, close the lid and get drawing. If your Tyco photocopier is of the fully functional variety, then subsequently pressing the copy button will emit your work out of the side, just like in Daddy's office. If, however, your Tyco copier is 26 years old and suffering from rubber perishment, then you may have to give it a helping hand to get it on its way. Which brings us on to Lights Alive. Now, this could easily be seen as a more primitive tool than the Etch-a-Sketch. After all, in technical terms, we're moving from vector imagery to pixels. Your canvas is restricted by pre-placed lights, providing a somewhat limited resolution. But they do freaking light up. Whoa. Manufactured by Tomy in 1984, the pad came with a variety of tools to aid your creative imagery. And frankly, whatever you drew, it looks great in the dark, especially with its spinning light show. Daytime drawing was a little less enthralling, especially given that your limited canvas size didn't provide the greatest amount of creative room. So, if we all take a well-deserved sidestep at this time into the world of home computing, we'll find ourselves playing with the revolutionary Sinclair Spectrum Light Pen. Produced by DK Tronics in 1983, the Light Pen is a hardware expansion for the Speccy, plugging into the expansion bus on the rear of the machine. And used in conjunction with the accompanying software, it allows you to draw directly onto your TV screen. Although, as with light guns, it requires an old style CRT to function. And this was a huge leap from bastardizing your joystick as an appropriate input device. Now you could actually do art like you were in the real world, but have it on your television. Crazy stuff, especially in 1983. Or oh, that was the theory, at least. This was essentially touchscreen functionality on your granny's old CRT, but you had to be prepared for considerable crashing and restarts to make any sort of progress, not to mention the convoluted mechanism of actually getting anything on the screen. So, next up is a children's favourite which I always wanted but never got until now. It's the VTech Video Painter. 
Now, I still had my spectrum when this amazing drawing system started appearing in the back pages of Great Universal, Index and Argos catalogues during the early 90s, and frankly for me, this is when drawing on your TV started to get serious. Deadly serious. This cool little toy plugged directly into your television via the RF socket and allowed you to draw directly onto its tablet surface. This was then directly translated onto the TV, which is amazing. Although drawing tablets were already available for PCs at this stage, nothing like this had been accessible for kids in the past. VTech changed that and truly allowed you to hog the TV. After all, you were trying to improve your artistic skill, which is vital for school. Along with a variety of background scenes, one which appears to show the future of the Twin Towers, you also get a couple of mini games and creative tools to aid with your works of art. Next we have the Image System. Now when I finally got hold of a Commodore 64, it was the Terminator 2 Bundle Pack in 1991, which happened to come with a cartridge also containing the modern music maker and a little painting tool called the Image System. The image system was frankly... crap. One of the main reasons for this was the limited palette functionality and convoluted user experience, which prevented the display of several colours at once on the canvas. Instead you had to view the colours through this strange viewfinder in the top corner. Another problem for the vast majority of C64 users was the lack of a mouse, and therefore drawing with the joystick was akin to stabbing your eyes out with a rusty tent peg. Now we're talking Deluxe Paint. This for me was the standout art package of the 16-bit era and indeed the 90s. The image of Tutankhamun in all its gold-coloured glory will forever be etched in my mind as a thing of unbelievable beauty. My 12-year-old mind could hardly conceive that a graphic that looked so lifelike could come out of an art package, but that's exactly where it did come from. And this alone led me to playing with Deluxe Paint for many months albeit producing nothing even vaguely on par with the quality of the demonstration images. Now by this point the concept of drawing on your telly was becoming so mainstream that even consoles got in on the act. Mario Paint was Nintendo's foray into the area for the Super Nintendo, and shipping in a larger than normal box, the package included a mouse, a mouse mat and of course the cartridge to knit all these components together. Being a Nintendo product, the concept of fun was built into the software as standard, featuring a variety of things to do such as fly swatting, music creation, with some rather questionable sound effects, and of course animation. It opened the world of painting for the 90s console generation, and even the Mega Drive got its own paint package, although it was hard to come by and frankly a little obscure. Which brings me on to the closing paint program, Microsoft Paint. Now it would be foolish and immensely time consuming to list every paint package I remember here, so I'll finish with Microsoft Paint. The paint program shipped as standard with Windows 3.1 in this instance. As PCs started to encroach on households, the paint program was now becoming a standard part of those households. And although MS Paint was a very simple affair, it still allowed countless school children to design and print out bizarre looking creations for both their homework and personal purposes. Christmas card anyone? <coughs> Nowadays children can draw on their touchscreen tablets or use pencil like control on their Wacom devices allowing a whole different ballpark of digital drawing and artistic expression. The excitement of being able to draw on the screen seems to have sadly dwindled, but it will forever remain something that excites and inspires my mind even to this day. Thank you for watching my story of evolution from paper to screen. Plenty more videos to come, so click subscribe if you want to see them. Thank you for watching and good night.